Hey everyone, welcome to Webinar Wednesdays. Uh, today we have FAAC USA, not the Italian one. Uh, we have Matt Rupert, a longtime lead technician with FAAC, and now he's the West Coast account manager uh, for FAAC and for Viking Access. So, so Matt is wearing a couple of hats, and, and today he's going to put on the FAAC hat, which he's been with them for, oh boy, how many years now, Matt? Almost nine. Nice. Excellent. Uh, industry veteran, wealth of knowledge. He's going to be talking about several operators from FAAC's catalog today. And uh, with that, we're just going to go ahead and get started. This whole thing will be recorded, so we can always watch this later. Um, thank you all for joining us, and Matt, take it away. All right, thanks guys for having me. Um, as Jeff said, you know, some of my background, I know the gate operators, I've done tech support. Um, we're gonna go a little more technical with this. I'll have some PowerPoint and some videos that I'm loading. Um, and I'm gonna go through my PowerPoints a little fast, because I know there's inf lots of information there. Um, so, we're gonna start with the barriers. We have our B680H, uh, which is a hydraulic barrier, and then the B614, which is an electromechanical barrier. Um, then we'll jump to our Wi-Fi cellular units and then touch on the S800H. So as you can see, one of the unique things on the B680 we'll get to is that the cover is just a cover, just like a swing gate or slide gate operator. That gives us the flexibility and you the flexibility that we have different colors. So red, white, gray, blue, and then we also have stainless steel. <clears throat> we have a little comparison chart here. The B680 is going to be, H is gonna be your workhorse. It's a low voltage, uh, brushless DC motor in hydraulic fluid. So you get the performance without as much maintenance needed because it's hydraulic. Um, it's 2 million cycles without any major maintenance and two onboard loop detectors. Your arms are gonna range, and we'll go over this a couple times, from anything from six and a half feet to 26 and a half feet. Um, and that's, that's measured in the opening. So it's a seven and a half foot arm, six and a half foot in the opening. Um, lots of options. You can cut the arm anywhere you want. You can do lights on the arm, articulated arms. Um, the voltage is anything from 100 to 240. It's a switching power supply. So if you have 208, it's really 202, you might run into problems somewhere else. Not an issue because we have our power supply there. Um, then we have our B614 down here on the bottom left, handling arms up to 12 feet long. Um, your opening time two to three seconds. This is spring counterbalance inside the machine, just like the B680H. You're never seeing anything outside, but this is a brushed DC motor. Um, a little small, compact, entry-level price point, um, and it's residential and light commercial. And the control boards are very similar. Uh, here's our diagram with our lengths, and you can see calling out the arm length that I went over, six and a half to 26 and a half foot on the B680H. You can see the profiles between our S arm and our L arm, our short and long versions. So 16.4 foot and under is an S arm, 20 to 26 is an L. Um, you'll see on this next slide, we don't ship a 26 and a half foot arm. It's never gonna show up undamaged. So one of the unique things FAC did is you have your primary arm, your 13 foot arm, and then you have that invisible joint. It slides into both arms and it bolts through, um, but all internally, you don't have any bolts sticking out. And it's super strong, works like in a wedge anchor um, where it spreads those two pieces of the joint apart. But that way you can get out to your 26 and a half feet. Um, and like I said, let's say you have a customer that says, I want an arm 20 foot, um, three quarters of an inch, you buy the arm, you measure it, you take the cap off, cut it back, and put the cap back on. So you can get any length you want and then balance it internally. You're gonna see on the frame here that we have our I-beam support, um, and then there's two springs, you just put it on which side you want, um, and the cover comes on afterwards. 
these charts, because we can do any arm length, you're gonna see on the previous slide, there was a rocker arm with your six holes. We'll go over it in the video. But you're just gonna go along the top and down the side, whether you have lights or don't have lights, for the length of arm for which hole to go in to balance the operator. After you bolted down the operator, you're going to install your spring. Um, in this case, we're going to go with the shorter spring, so the black one. Your rocker arm has six holes. You can look at the table, uh, table one for the S-beam or table two for the L-beam, long or short, to see if you have an arm or lights and what hole. Um, the inside hole is hole one on both sides. The outside is hole six. You'll see the piston is on hole three on both. Um, Everything's metric, so you're going to use a 19 millimeter wrench. Um, we're going to do a short arm, and so it's going to be six and a half foot. You'll see that's hole one. So the operator's released. You may have your rocker arm move a little, that's fine. Just hold your piston. You're going to grab your spring sleeve. There's a hole for the vent screw. The vent screw's right there in the front. Slide that on. Slide your spring on, and then you're gonna have your retainer. It's tapered at the top, flat on the bottom. Uh, and when you put it on, if this cylinder is not far enough, you can just pull it slowly and thread it on. Once you have it threaded to the top, you're just going to insert in the first hole for your bolt. And after you put on the spring side on the first hole, you're going to tighten it up all the way. You'll go around to the non-spring side and you're going to take the bolt out of this side and do the same thing and put it on the first hole. Uh, one common mistake that we have people make is they will do, they'll either leave it on the third hole, not paying attention to the manual on the balancing, um, and just run the machine. One of the other things we've seen them do is they'll adjust the spring side cylinder, but they won't do the non-spring side cylinder. You need the both pistons acting at the same rate. Um, obviously, it takes more tightening than I'm going to do right now but you're gonna get it tightened up. Um, once they're tightened up, we have the stops on the top of the arm because it's manually released. You have these bump stops here. You can take a 17 millimeter wrench. I know you can't see this right now, but you just loosen the nut and then you can move them, move them in and out and we'll get to that as we mount the arm. On the control board, just for a layout, our safeties are normally closed. You see that the FSW, the stop, the alarm. Um, this would be something we can go over at any point. Um, but if you see 12 through 21, we do have four relay outputs on this control board. Um, you can set those to different things. Uh, if you want to do a red green traffic light, we have one with our magnetic side of the line that's LED that can power off the board and turn. Uh, red and green as it's okay to go through or the arm's going to come down. Um, we can signal other things with the relays. The options are really pretty vast. We also have a sequenced interface option which snaps on the DIN rail and that'll allow you to sequence it up with a slide gate operator. So say you've got a Viking H10 um, and then you have the B680H in front of it and you want the slide gate to open up all the way first. You can use the sequenced interface the slide gate would open once it's all the way open, then the barrier is going to function to just take one car at a time. And once the barrier has been closed, then it'll allow the slide gate to um, close. Um, you also see on the right hand side, we have two onboard loop detectors, loop one and loop two. Uh, there's lots of logic charts, but typically loop one is just opening. Loop two is geared down in safety, um, depending on how it's configured. So we have those onboard already uh, set for you 
And then we have some light connector connectors. We'll get into that more. You can do a light on the cabinet and a light on the a light on the arm. Um, we also can do master secondary on the barriers with just two wires from the master to the secondary barrier. After you've installed the B680H, um, you're going to put your spring on. We already have it installed. You're gonna look at the balancing chart. We have the shortest arm, the six and a half foot, uh, seven and a half foot total length. That goes in hole one, the inside hole. Hole six is the outside hole. You do the same thing on the other uh, cylinder, on the other side. And then the next thing you're gonna do with the arm on is take the arm to 45 degrees and let go. Now the arm needs to stay up at 45 degrees. You can see it's creeping down. So what we're gonna do is just raise the arm all the way up. And just by hand, you're gonna turn the adjuster. Um, longer arms, more lights, you're gonna come out on the holes and you need, may need more adjustment on the spring. We do have two split springs, a black spring for the short arms and a red spring for the long arms. Then you take the arm back to 45 degrees and let go. I happen to get the balancing right. If it goes up, less tension. If it goes down, more tension. Then after that, you have your positive stops on the top. We've already adjusted the open position stop so the arm's level. Then you take the arm down and it's drooping down right now. So all we do is turn this bump stop counterclockwise, just pull it out. You'll see the arm go up and you wanna just be a hair above level. You can eyeball it. Um, the arm doesn't have to be level. If you have a crown in the road, you can make the arm match the crown in the road. Um, but these are your positive stops. You set them, very important that you grab your 17 millimeter wrench and lock in the jam nut. That's a mistake people make, and it'll get out of adjustment um, over time if you don't lock the jam nut. Another note on the positive stop there, if you like have this at a guard shack and say your, your gutter's hanging over um, and the arm can't make it up to 90, instead of smashing the gutter or damaging the arm, you can use the positive stop to limit your open travel as well. All right, once we have our arm balanced, we can power on. We have the arm in the closed position. Uh, we'll go over the wiring in a minute. We've already added our jumpers in and we will cover that. Um, you have the manual release right here on the front. You're gonna just turn it clockwise until it gets snug and give it just a little bit more. Now, there's a balancing chart in the manual. There's a table for the S beams and for the L beams, just like there are for the springs. We have an F, a minus, and a plus button. We're gonna push and release the F, it says CF. And in the balancing chart for the six and a half or seven and a half foot arm, we have zero one. If you ever program your barrier and somebody says, hey, I've got a 13 footer, it's going up and down in six seconds, they didn't do this first step correctly. After you do that, we'll go over programming more later, but you're just gonna push through programming to get to your NT setting. When you hit the plus, the barrier should open. And the minus, it's gonna close. You're gonna drive it all the way closed. Push and release your F again, you have your TL. You let go, it's two dashes. You're gonna hold the plus and minus at the same time. And the arm's gonna self-learn. It's gonna go up to the positive stop and the open and down in the close. Um, this is just learning its limits, it's going to go slow. And then after this programming cycle, you'll have your speed and you can adjust your speed as you need to or want to for the application. So once it's done programming, we push and release our F, it says ST with a Y. That's do you want to save your settings, you do. Push and release it again, you have zero, zero for closed. Give your open command. You can see that the barrier is opening in 1.5 seconds, slows down. You give your other command and your control board readouts changing as you're operating. We also have the arm lights, which is an option. We will pre-install these on the short arms for you. They flash when they're down. You'll notice they're flash while they're opening. They're off when it's open. Flashing on closing, and you can change it to be solid on closed if you'd like. This is um, 
kind of zoomed in where you couldn't see what was going on with programming, um, now you'll be able to see it. After you go through the programming and now you can see a little easier, you have your F button, your minus, and your plus. So basic programming, it says push and release the F. A lot of times people just click it and they can't see what they did. So if you hold the F for a second, you can verify with the manual where you are, you let go and then you have your setting you can change. One of the first things you're gonna change after initial programming is your logic, which is LO right here. E is command open, command close. Um, we have multiple logics and logic charts in the back to figure out what you're doing. Uh, it'll depend on if you're doing everything wired into this terminal strip or if you're using our onboard loop detectors. We do have two onboard loop detectors you can turn on. Um, loop one is your open or exit loop. Loop two is your down safety, depending on uh, what logic setting you pick. So we're gonna switch to A, which is a timer to close mode, just to show you. PA is our pause time, it's at 20 seconds. I'm gonna take it down to like two or three. Um, there are lots of options in programming. We have speed open for how fast we open, speed close for how fast we close. These are both on 10. The board will automatically adjust if you do a 26 and a half foot arm. It's not gonna let you run it at 1.5 seconds. So the board adjusts it and then you can, um, you have some leeway in there. Um, L1 is loop one, L2 loop two. We're not using them so I'm not turning on. Then you have sensitivity for loop one, sensitivity for loop two. Your motor movement that we went over a minute ago your time learning and we're going to save our changes once we're out it says zero zero we give an open command the operator opens you're going to see we're going to switch to a zero four now instead of a zero one and then time out and close so on the operator we talked about one machine arms from six and a half to 26 and a half foot. This gives you a rough approximation of your speeds. Um, and, and typically we're qu quoting at the slowdown point. You can see it's most of the way open. That's when people are driving through. Um, this is defaulted as we talked about in the programming as you set your arm length, but just so you, you have a general idea, you're between 1.5 and six seconds roughly, depending on the length of arm. We also have an optional battery backup. You can see the, the two batteries. It comes with the two batteries in the holster, um, a charge controller that's up on the DIN rail, and we give you the pre-terminated wire, uh, pre-cut wire that you can wire in. And on a 14-foot arm, you have a standby roughly of 26 hours or 500 consecutive cycles. Um, the more that you power off of the board, uh, lights, the LEDs on the arm, the hood cabinet, of course, is gonna cut that down performance of batteries, but it gives you an idea. Um, it is a continue to run battery backup, but you can also wire it in as a one shot open. And that can be added at any time. You can add it on install. Let's say you're a few months later and they say, hey, we want it. No big deal. You're ordering the same part number and you're installing the battery backup. You just have to pull the cover off. After you have your B680 installed, all your wiring and programming's done, you'll put the cover on. Uh, you'll see that we do have our halo on this one. We have our light that's already pre-terminated. You're going to drop it behind the control board. Keep it inside the studs to keep it clean. And it comes in and plugs in right here. We have our connector right here for our rope light for our arm. When you plug that in, if it, the light doesn't come on on your rope light, you just swap the polarity. It's the middle and the top plug on this gray connector. The other thing you're going to have is your arm. If you're a left hand or right hand installation for which side the arm drives on, when you go to the NT setting, if the motor runs the opposite direction, if it says OP for open and the arm's closing, you just power down and swap your black and your brown wire for your motor direction. Once you have everything covered, you want your wires coming in inside this foam uh, strip here. So you can tuck your wires, anything, access control. And then we have this cover that screws on, it also has foam on the bottom of the cover, and that way it seals your wires and protects your installation. The last thing that you have that you wanna make sure that you don't forget, when installing a hydraulic operator, you have a bleed screw or a breather screw. You want to remove this screw, um, and you can just set it in a bag and keep it to the side or toss it, but you need to have the, uh, the system venting properly.
So just as overview, you have four different color cabinet color options, red, blue, white, gray, or stainless steel. Um, and we have them kitted as part numbers to make it easier, as, easier to order um, for white and gray. And you can get an S kit or an L kit, and that's gonna give you the correct spring, the uh, black screen spring for the L kit, the S kit, and the red spring for the L kit. Um, it is important if you're doing multiple operators, you put the correct spring on, but you're going to know pretty quick when you counterbalance if you get that uh, wrong and you can, you can adjust it. Um, another flexibility point on the B680, I've had a couple of guys who have installed them on job sites and they had a construction entrance that they were using. It was a 14 foot arm and then they weren't using that entry anymore with the barriers. So they just unbolted the machine moved it to another location, and I think they needed a 20-footer, so they just bought the L spring box and the, the next arm, and then readjusted, reconfigured the machine for the longer arm. So you do, those aren't everyday situations, but you do have a lot of flexibility there. Oh. Sorry. There's one last view of the B680H with the cover on the halo light and the arm light. See the halo light flashing and going green when it's safe to go through. And it flashes again as it goes down. And that's the B680H. So now you're gonna see a lot of similarities to the B614. So like the little brother of the B680H. Um, it's a brush DC motor. Um, you're a little under two seconds to 80 degrees with a 10 foot boom to your slowdown point. And the max length arm is a 12 foot. You'll notice it's a rectangular arm. It is aluminum, uh, just like the B680H. Uh, we can do lights on at the arm as well, but it's on the bottom now, not on the top. Um, and this is a 115 volt machine. You get on the bottom left here, a little breakaway of the cabinet. You can see the spring inside to counterbalance the arm. Um, we're going to tell you again which hole to put that on. And again, the operator is not handed, so you don't order a left or a right. You order the machine and then install the spring, in this case on the opposite side that the arm comes down. Um, in the gearbox there, it's a quadrilateral leveling system, which sounds super fancy. What it does is it gives you a lot of efficiency. You're going to have an automatic slowdown as it, um, nice smooth slowdown as the gearbox cranks around. Um, on your display, you're going to see your same buttons. You have an F, a minus, and a plus here. Uh, that display is not on, but we'll go over it in a video as well. Uh, radio receiver that can plug in on both the B680 and B614 if you want to do radio receiver. And then you see those numbers we were referring to on the B680H that's in the manual. Zero zero is close, zero one's open. Sometimes somebody will install a barrier and program it and then say it's not working right with my safeties. Well, if you know if it's open and it says zero zero, you just know that you have the motor wired backwards and it programmed backwards. Um, and you can see some of your, your other options here for your display. This is the FAAC B614. We're showing it with the optional arm light and the optional cover light. You'll see that those change. Those can get added at any point. This is an electromechanical barrier and you'll see that it has automatic slowdown in the open and close. It's going to be very familiar to the B680 in the way that it programs and you install it. If you ever go to maintenance the machine, you just turn the key, take the cover off, and now you have access to the control board. Um, you're already on this one gonna have your jumpers in for your closing safety and your emergency input, and you'll see the two lights on. Uh, then we're gonna have two loop inputs, not onboard loop detectors. We wanna make sure you remember that. You're gonna mount a loop detector down below uh, if you have an accessory loop detector. Also, we have our four programmable relay outputs. You have your F, your minus, and your plus to run through programming just like we did in the B680. This one has the optional radio receiver installed. We have our power switch over here on the side, and we have our nice foam that our wires are going to come through from the cabinet. 
Then on installation, or if you ever need to adjust anything that's inside the cabinet, there are two bolts that bolt on with weather stripping on the door. And now you can see you have all this room inside. What we're not showing because our arm's so short is on this one, we would have a spring mounted in one of these holes and it would be anchored down here with a tensioner. You're gonna do the same thing at balancing at 45. You can see we have our den rail for mounting our accessories and these tabs for your wires that come up, your power, anything else coming up, you can zip tie them to these tabs. The hole for bringing in your conduits is roughly four inches by six inches. The six inch dimension's a little bigger. Then the machine is electromechanical. There's no hydraulics here. We have our gearbox. We have our brushed DC motor that plugs into the control board and then your spring. This machine is gonna, um, maintenance is recommended every 500,000 cycles. And the maintenance is just simply replacing the spring and replacing the DC motor. So you've got two screws here and it runs up to the board. So this is a FAAC B614 electromechanical barrier. It's residential and light commercial rated. Um, so you're gonna size it for like business complexes, um, residences if they have it, a parking lot that isn't used all day long. Not like a parking structure, that would be your B680H. Gated community is probably gonna be more your B680H. So just for comparison, we won't go through the whole thing, but to tell the differences between the B680, the B614, uh, whether it's hydraulic or electromechanical. Um, one key point I like to make sure people know is that, and remember, is the B680H has two onboard loop detectors. The B614 has inputs for external loop detectors um, so that you're not selling a B614 or specking your job and forgetting to add the loop detectors in. Um, moving on from that, we have, we just released this in the last month. Um, it's the FAAC Wi-Fi intercom. It complements our um, guest entry phone line where we already have a cellular unit and a cellular video unit. Um, now we actually have this Wi-Fi unit, which is very much like the cellular video. Um, we have the high gain antenna you see here on the right. Um, there's no charge for our apps. So you can download the app, program the unit, is, as long as you have the password for the Wi-Fi at the house or business you're adding this, this will allow um, them to just open their phone and give a command and operate two relays off the gate. Uh, you have your keypad codes you can program in at the keypad on the Wi-Fi. You can also hardwire this. So we have some people that, you know, you're going to be in extended range. You can run a Cat5 or Cat6 from your modem out to the unit directly and now you're not relying on Wi-Fi. And everybody I'm sure is aware of it, but you know, blocking the Wi-Fi antenna is of course going to hurt your performance on the unit. You wanna make sure you have a clear line of sight. Um, the high gain antenna is going to help with that as long as it's not uh, pointed at something, you're not parking a truck in front of it, or we've actually heard of somebody mounting the antenna to a gate. So as the gate swung open, you lose your signal. Um, we do, as I mentioned, we have two relay outputs. You can do live stream video, you can record the video, you can take pictures all from your phone with the app. Um, and it'll call up to four smartphones, both iPhone and Android. Then on the, the other units, we have the cellular intercom. This unit has the most features. You'll notice there's no video camera on it. Um, it has a lot, uh, again, free apps. We don't charge anything for the SIM card um, or fee. It comes with a card you can activate or they can activate their own, AT&T or T-Mobile. Um, and then with the apps, there's a lot of neat features. This one's really loaded on the app with features. One of the neatest features is caller ID. So you program in somebody's phone number. It just does it by text through the app, but it preloads your text. And then you give them the phone number. So let's say you've got grandma picking up the kids from soccer practice, taking them to your house and dropping them off. You don't wanna write down a four digit code and have her have it on a sticky note and lose it. Um, you just 
grab her phone, program in the phone number to your gate, and on your app, you program in her phone number and give her 24-hour access. You could only give her access on Tuesdays from 10 till noon. You do the same thing with your gardener. Then all they do is call call the unit, and when it, the caller ID reads their phone number, it just auto-pops the gate open. Um, very similar to that, you can do uh, codes that only work for an hour, two hours, six hours. Um, this is a nice seller for Airbnbs or VRBO where you have tenants turning over. If you don't want to go, you can program the unit from anywhere. You just have them set their, you know, set what it is. They're not keeping a code that works for the next set of tenants. So there's a lot of options. Again, we have two relays on this. You can latch them. You can also send from your phone with the app, you can send a command to it and it'll tell you if relay one's latched or relay two's latched. Um, if your gate operator has a, a dry contact, truly dry limit output, you can also know if the gate's open or closed. Um, lots and lots of features with this one. And you can see the antenna on the top there for the cellular. Um, there's, a, there's a whole lot you can do with, with this unit. Um, and then just for comparison, you have the, the part numbers here, the list pricing. Um, so the 4G, uh, cellular intercom, the 4400, the top one, that's the fully loaded app, lots and lots of options. And then the video options, whether you do cellular video, let's say you can't get a Wi-Fi signal, you can't hardwire out that far, you're going to do a, a remote cellular modem that comes with the unit. And now you have the video, same features as the Wi-Fi I talked about. On that one, you program the keypad at the keypad. But your video, live stream, voice communication, taking pictures, you have all of that accessible through the app. And on those, they didn't list it. If you happen to be in an area that doesn't have 4G service, on the uh, 4400 model, we also have a 4300 I didn't list, that if you only have 3G service, you don't have 4G, we do have it with a 3G modem. Um, and then moving on, we'll just touch on um, some points of the S800H operator. Um, this is your top of your line install. Um, the operator goes in the ground. You do not see it. It spins the gate from underneath, which is unique. Um, this is a low voltage DC hydraulic gate operator. Uh, it has an encoder. And so you're in the ground, it'll handle a gate that's up to 1,760 pounds, um, up to 16 foot long. The standard unit up to 13. Uh, if you do the unit without locks, it's called an SBW, that would be up to 16 feet. Um, biparting, all the control boards are single or bipart. You have some of the specs here. We have 100 degree and 180 degree units. Uh, if you have a a circle driveway or a half circle driveway you can have one unit open 70 degrees you can have the other unit open 135 180 degrees even so you have a lot of flexibility you can run those you can mix and match so you save a little bit of money the 180 of course costs just a little bit more um, we also have the encoder you can see that on the or the top of the operator or maybe the right of the operator here the uniqueness of the encoder is it helps the operator to keep pushing in windy situations, as long as it's not enough to trip the obstruction sensor, which you self-adjust appropriate to the gate for your surface area, your gate, your wind load. So it's not pushing, it's basically pushing hard enough, but not too hard. Um, that also works to give you a consistent slowdown and continuing, you know, like I said, to push the gate along. So very smooth, consistent operation. Just this, um, this is just a little bit of a breakaway, but on the pinion, one of the unique things, uh, the gold pinion here that's sticking up, is in a forced gate situation, um, typically you're gonna have damage to your gate operator. It's going to need to come in for repair. We do repairs at FAC. NCON is an authorized repair center. They can do it as well. But on a forced S800H, most of the time, 
I believe all of the time that we've seen, but I try to be safe and say most of the time, you're gonna have the pinion twist. So if somebody says, hey, my gate's shutting 10 inches too far, um, or stopping 10 inches short of closing would be more accurate, and then opening and hitting the pilaster, or hitting the curb. It wasn't doing that before. Well, the operator didn't self-adjust. What happened is somebody forced the gate, and you'll see that the pinion, instead of these teeth going straight up and down or twisted, that's a field repair. NCON can do it for you, we can do it for you, but you can actually order the pinion and a couple other parts. We have a chart for it on our website, and it's not a hydraulic repair. And typically, it was designed that way, so it's not a hydraulic repair. You guys can just change out the pinion, a couple other parts, put the operator back in and test it. And in most cases, you don't need to adjust the positive stops. Little overview of the operator here. We have the two handles for installation. Another unique thing on the S800H, um, it is the 760 was the predecessor. Um, and there's some things that are a little different. You can still use external stops but you can also use the flanges to stop the operator because we have positive stops in the flanges on the bottom left, we're pointing to that. Um, manual release on the operator, we'll see the external in a minute, 24 volt uh, DC motor. So every kit you buy includes a battery backup, true battery backup, the board runs on line voltage uh, and steps it down, or if power goes out, you have your batteries kicking in to run your gate operator and the encoder that we mentioned before. Uh, we do the parts diagram, just you have your exploded view so you can see we do stock spare parts in Florida and California, and Con also stocks parts. Um, so if something happens, you need a rebuild, you didn't, uh, drainage is key on any in-ground operator. Uh, you can see the load bearing box has holes. Uh, you need to make sure you have a drain. The manual calls out for a two inch drain. Some people will try to do a half inch, maybe three quarter. It may work, but if it gets blocked, you no longer have a drain. So the operator's rated to 30 minutes underwater, and then the water needs to be gone. Um, if you're servicing a unit and it's been having problems, it shows sign of water damage, there's debris on the top of the operator. I do recommend pull the operator when you're doing maintenance and fill the box three times. My rule is three times. If the water drains out of three times, you probably have a good drain. Um, you know if it works or it doesn't work and you'll see it back up and then you can address the drain and maybe save your customer and you some headache uh, in water damage and corrosion damage over time. Uh, you can see that we do have the bushing and the collar that sit on the box. Uh, we have these boxes in steel and stainless steel and the boxes can be welded to your column. The operators can also be inverted and say you have an underground parking garage. This is residential and light commercial rated, uh, continuous duty. Um, so the boxes are super strong on the back, the bottom, and the, the back side there. And then the front three sides are just for your concrete pour, so you have a, a frame or a base. <laughs> um, this is in the manual. You pre-set up the operator before you install it in the box. Um, I can go over this at any point with people. Do, I've done trainings at NCON and I can do trainings on site uh, when COVID's over, um, but we can go through it and pre-set up the machine before you install it. You can do this in your shop. You can do this on the tailgate of your truck. You do it before you're out in the weather, you know, sun, rain, whatever, pre-set up the machines to get the rotation that you want. And this is section three in the manual. Um, once you're used to this, your install goes very smooth. When you try to install the operator without doing this, you it can be pretty painful and you suffer quite a bit in trying to get the operator in the box and lined up. So as a key, go over section three. And you can do most of this. It walks you through cranking this plastic handle you see in fact figure three by hand. It's a DC operator, grab your two batteries, give it 24 volts and just do it off of that. It's a lot easier. Um, this is just stepping through the manual um, on how you adjust the stops and where you put it. And so I like it to be here for a reference. We can at any point go over that in more detail. Then also, 
you're going to have your gate open. There was an indexing mark on the collar that you have to make sure is key when you weld it to the bottom of the gate. And then you open the gate, you've indexed the operator for section three. I really like to highlight figure 10 because the first time people put it in, a lot of times what we hear is, oh man, it was really hard to line up the pinion. Well, if you weld the collar right on the indexing mark and you do section three, it'll slide right in there. You do want to grease the pinion before you slide it in. The other thing is figure 10 here. People slide the operator in and then on figure C, they try to hold the operator up in the box and get the bolts dropped in at the same time. What they miss is that we give you the handle with the little uh, adapter piece that snaps in it. You actually slide that under on figure 10, number B. You slide it on the, under the operator to hold it up. Now you don't have to hold the operator. You can drop your two bolts in and tighten them up. Uh, the hydraulic manual release um, is another point. We have outlined it well in the manual now. It was a little rough at the start. Um, this will give you, if you want to give your customer your key to release at the top of the operator, after you have everything programmed, install this. We go through, you have your bleed screws on your manual release. And these next couple pages, uh, especially the next one we're going to click on, this one shows you where to install it. You can visually see, um, get an idea if it was done right, but you want to check if you ever see leaking in the flanges, then on figure 20 here where it says right, it probably wasn't installed correctly. Um, if you ever see it bottomed out as wrong on the right, I want to caution you, you're going to have to send it in and pay for a repair. So don't just crank everything down all the way. Um, you follow these steps, the 4.2.1 is going to walk through exactly how to tighten that union bolt. Um, if you have any questions, ask Incon about it, ask me about it. We'll go through it so you get it right the first time and don't damage your operator. Save a lot of headaches and callbacks. Um, when you do install the external manual release, you're going to need to fill the operator up and bleed the operator. If you've already programmed it, it's already running, you know it's good, you install the release, then you can go through and bleed it while the gate's running, and you can see that we label um, in figure 21 which bleed screw to use for which direction. Um, that was just a brief overview of the S800H, but in ground, low voltage, DC, hydraulic, you have your battery backup, 1,760 pound gate. Ideally, you want a top hinge, and then the operator is your bottom hinge. And then, just because we don't have time, just a brief overview of the rest of the operators in the FAAC line. The 400 and 400 EG are still some of our most popular operators. It's what FAAC started with in 1965. Um, high voltage, the motor's in the hydraulic fluid. It's a hydraulic operator. You use positive stops. It really is a workhorse and kind of flagship of the line. Um, and then if you want the self-contained hydraulic as well still, but you're doing it on a residence, you could do a 422 or a 402. Um, we also still have the original in-ground uh, hydraulic operator, which is a 750 there on the bottom. Same weight rating, little shorter gate. Uh, you don't have an encoder and you're running hydraulic lines. So you're gonna have a control board and then one to two pumps on the wall and you're gonna run hydraulic lines uh, into the ground. There's still a good use and application for 750s. We also have an optional box just like the SA-100H uses. Um, now you're going to see all my labels are red, just highlighting that these are all low voltage operators. So they all include battery backup. Um, S450H. Now S450H is a residential operator. People will play, put it in place of a 400 and make a mistake. Uh, 400 is commercial industrial rated as well. The S450H is not. Then we have our 415. Our S418 is a great entry level operator. Same quality of FAAC. People don't think of us for this operator. It's going to compete with your residential entry level machines very well price wise. Same control board that the S800H uses. Same features. Just two wires to the motor. Positive on stops on the arm. It's going to be a very quick and easy installation, um, but you're going to have the longevity and the reputation of FAAC behind it with our warranties and consistency of operation. 
the uh, 390 on the bottom left is great if you have bigger columns and pillars because um, you can get more reach on it around the pillar. We already went over the S800H. And then we have the 770, um, which is a electromechanical in-ground swing gate operator, no hydraulics. And you'll see you have the manual release arm there uh, with the key kind of hanging out. Slide gate operators, we have our 844 rack and pinion. This operator is small. It's 10 inches um, uh, across the front there, about 12 inches tall. I'm being very rough with the numbers. It's rack and pinion. You're gonna see it packs a punch. Um, it'll do up to a 4,000 pound gate. It, at 4,000 pounds, it'll do a 131 foot gate. At 2,164. Um, some guys aren't used to rack and pinion. But especially if you're near the ocean or a corrosive environment or a desert environment, um, a chain is gonna rust, it's gonna corrode, it's gonna get tight, it's gonna stretch, it's gonna need maintenance. A rack and pinion doesn't. Um, it's gonna take a lot to corrode through a galvanized rack. We also have a nylon rack for the lighter gates. Um, it's gonna take you a little bit longer on the installation, but you're pretty much done after that. You can come back and check your photo eyes, your wheels, your rollers, but there really isn't an adjustment on the rack to be done. It's a very quiet, it's very small, it weighs about 46 pounds. You can bolt it to the concrete. You can also just weld a kicker off your roller post. We know of uh, some sites that had vandalism, they'll mount the operator on the top rail of the gate with the rack up there by the rollers, and now it's up and elevated and harder to get to. Same thing if you have a water table that's fluctuating, you don't want your operator getting flooded, raise it up. Um, below that, we have our C720, uh, C721. Um, the 844 is UL325. The C721 is not. Uh, it's a good operator if you have an application that you're self certifying or getting somebody else to do a uh, battery backup that fits inside the unit. Um, then we also have our 950 N2 door operator. Uh, it's always been popular in niches, but with you guys installing gate operators, it may be an expanse for you right now, especially with COVID, we're seeing increased sales with people wanting touch-free environments. So instead of walking up to the door and grabbing the handle and pulling or pushing, you can put um, a sensor on the door. So as you walk up to the door, it automatically opens. Um, you have time zone control on it. There's a lot of accessories. We can do biparting doors. You can do like a Sally port setup. So there's lots and lots of options. It's low cost if you get the application where you want to do it on a um, like storefront type aluminum door or even wood door. We've had some people use them for their houses and do it as like a escape room kind of thing where you um, have a, a cabinet that opens and then you can go to an additional room in your house just for fun or whatever the, the purpose. So uh, we have lots of options there. And then moving on, we have traffic bollards. Um, we have four lines. We have residential, commercial, industrial, and then two crash-rated bollards. Uh, the hydraulic automatic or self-contained hydraulic, so you're just running wires to them. Um, we also have fixed and semi-automatic. So if there's any questions on that, we really have a wide array of products that you can use. You can use the bollards with the barriers, the bollards with iron gates. Um, we've seen people use them for their garages, inside or outside. Uh, if they have a car collection. So lots of options for you there. Let's see here. So that's really it. I know it's a lot of information. Um, thanks for tuning in and going through it and having me. I really appreciate it. And if you guys have any follow-up questions, anything, let me know. Um, I did do tech support here for five years and I uh, worked for a service in installation company for seven years before that. So a lot of your questions on, I want this to work, how's it gonna work, um, I can answer. All right, well, thank you very much, Matt, for your valuable time. Uh, as you can see from this presentation, FAAC has an extensive product line that offers an option for almost any job site that you have out there. Many of them being low voltage with battery backup built in, which is really a, almost a necessity in our times now. Uh, NCON has carried the FAAC line for 
20 years now, and we're proud to be a partner. Um, so with that said, thank you for joining us. We appreciate your time. We know everybody's busy. This will be recorded. It'll be on our website. You can go to it at any time and get all this information, go back to it. And uh, thank you very much for joining us. We'll see you next Wednesday for Webinar Wednesdays. Have a pleasant day.